there's a, a gentleman, uh, we'll call him Greek dude or GD uh, for now. He he has a, a heck of a, a statement to bring up for you. I'm not sure if he can hear me. So if you want to introduce him and say hello, uh, he had a thing to read. And then I think he wanted to get your thoughts on something. Yeah, the GD was the guy that uh, joined, I think, for the first time on the Discord server a couple days ago. And he was there for a big conversation that we had on what are rights and who gets them. And uh, and he had some uh, interesting thoughts and some great resources to share. So I, I look forward to talking with him about whatever. What's up, GD? Can you hear me? Hey, hi, Patrick. Uh, thank you for hosting me for one moment on your show. I will just ask you my question and then I will let you continue um, and hear what you, you may have to say. Uh, my remark is about your theory of property based on use. Um, Hans Hermann Hoppe, in uh, his book, A Short History of Man, I think, says that just walking through a road or a forest doesn't mean you homestead it. Uh, picking up uh, berries doesn't mean that you own the bush. You need to transform whatever resource exists in nature into something productive and useful uh, in order to homestead it. So he proposes the labor uh, connection, not the usage connection. And I wonder why. Now, both your idea, the usage, and the labor establish a historic event which objectively can be used to make your claim superior than the claim of some other random guy. So which is, which is how property conflicts are resolved. It's who has the highest claim to the property, right? Sorry exactly. to interrupt. So, so, so they both make it. They both do the job. Why is labor a better idea, maybe? And I want your idea on that. I think it is because um, if I work hard to create something and then you come and get it for free, effort, effortlessly, then you are effectively enslaving me. You are using me as a productive instrument for your purposes against my will. And that links you back to self-ownership in a way that usage doesn't. So if you want to link the ownership of external objects back to self-ownership, you need, I think, labor. It helps you more than usage helps you. I, w- I would be interested in your thoughts on that. And uh, I-, I don't need to speak anymore. Thank you very much. Oh, you don't have to run off if you don't want to. You're welcome to hang out and have a conversation with me. But it's totally up to you. No pressure. It's voluntary. Um what constitutes labor? Like, if labor isn't a form of use, uh, I, I, I'm, is this a distinction without a difference? Because when I say oh, make okay. first use of something, um, you know, how is that not, you know, using it? Using it is a, a form of labor, right? You're taking a piece of property and you're putting it to use. You're um, utilizing it. We, these are all words that kind of mean the same thing, right? Right. If I pick berries from a bush, um, I certainly, you can say I own the berries that I picked, um, Mm -hmm. but do I own the bush? Uh, The difference is that it didn't take me any effort to create the bush. Uh, The effort was only to put the berries in my my basket. Um, And therefore, um, if you steal my berries, uh, sorry, if you go and take the bush rather, you are not stealing anything that I dedicated my time and life to. Uh, Therefore, I cannot link it back to my self-ownership. So, if if the bush is previously unowned before you pick the berries, uh, so the first thing I'll say, and this is not a response or uh, it's not related, but it's kind of tangential. um, It's just something else that I see, I think people get wrong. Um, is that you can accidentally come to own something. Uh, I think you ha- I think there has to be intent there. Um, intent to own. Uh, you have to have an understand. And, and this goes to our conception of rights that we talked about a couple days ago, which is, uh, you know, ownership is, uh, is, is, uh, a conceptual thing. It's a concept. It's a, a right. And a right is a mutual understanding between people. Uh, and so you can't, accidentally uh, so the same for the same reason a dog cannot own property is the same reason a sentient mind can't accidentally own something they have to purposefully choose to exert the concept of ownership over the thing i guess is what i'm saying so like you can't walk through a forest um with no intent to own 
you know, the, the few square centimeters. And I say that because you're not from America. <clears throat> I don't know. You would be square inches here anyway. Um, so if you don't have the intent to like take ownership of the centimeters you're walking on, uh, then it's not like you accidentally just automatically gain ownership of the land that you step foot on as you're walking by. I think you have to like, there has to be an intent there. You have to will have a will and an understanding of property and, and a will to own it. Um, that's the first thing. Um, the, the, the second thing is just like, it, it's a, it's like you divide up a natural resource and, and you're, it's like a, it's like a question to decide, like, um, let's say I, I want to take ownership of this rock that fell off a mountain by picking up the rock. Do I also gain ownership of the entire mountain? Um, that's an interesting question. I think that's, is that a good uh, association or analogy to the, it's the same thing with like the fruit in the bush, the berry in the bush. Um, I think you're, you're bringing up the, the ambiguity in defining um, labor or defining usage. As you said previously, both of those have a certain leeway that has to be clarified. So that, that is not, that is not the, the advantage or the disadvantage of either. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see that uh, picking up the rock uh, has anything to do with uh, homesteading the whole mountain it came from, right? Well, yeah, and, and but it's, I mean, you could also say like if you picked up uh, a gold nugget from what was to become the gold mine in the side of the mountain, you know, that's different. It, the the intent to own uh, a, the gold mine would. Uh, enable your use of that picking up of the gold nugget rock to, you know, start gaining ownership of that area. Now you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily be assumed to like gate, like you could follow the gold vein as deep as it went into the planet spanning across, you know, however many miles, of course not. It would just be, you know, what you actually were able to make use of at that time. And I think that same argument would go for the berry bush as well. Like if you, uh, if you were in a berry bush orchard and you picked a berry off of a single tree with the intent of just eating a berry, you intended to take ownership of that berry out of an unknown state and make it owned. But if you came upon uh, an orchard of berry bushes with the intent to begin your new uh, you know, berry business and you harvested all the berries and then you know you started protecting that property and uh, and, you know, cultivating it to grow more berries, then you're using not just the berry, but you're using the bushes as well. You're making the first use of the bushes as well. How is that for, for an answer? I totally agree with your example. In that scenario, I think everybody uh, on the libertarian side would agree that you own the bush um, if you employ it in a productive uh, enterprise. Now, uh, the difference is... If you just pick the berries, um, sorry, uh, let me let me put it differently. If you uh, don't employ the bush in anything productive, if you don't put a little fence around it, or if you don't water it, or do anything for it, and you simply push the uh, pick the berries, uh, then uh, would you agree that you haven't really used the bush? Therefore, you don't own it in the same way that I would say you haven't labored for the bush. Therefore, you don't own it. I mean, this is the subjectivity. The, uh, I, I do not have an objective answer to this question. I have a personal preference, uh, which would be to be pretty liberal with first use. Um, so like if, if I if, if I ate some berries and I just basically announced, look, this is my berry bush, guys, it's unowned which means that I now have the highest claim of ownership to unowned property. Like uh, how would you contest that ownership? You'd, you'd come along and I'd be like, sorry, I, I used this bush. Look, here are the berries I'm eating. Um, I, I would subjectively personally, I think that that person owned the bush. Um, but I don't have an objective answer there. And maybe that's me failing and there's work to be done in a lot of areas. And this is probably one of them. That's that's fair enough. I think that's a good answer for me. I, I would simply uh, say again that if you hope to connect ownership of external objects back to your self-ownership, 
which is a nice argument to have, then you need somehow to explicitly make it clear that if someone steals your property, however you define it, then he's abusing yourself in a way that you don't approve of. And, and if, you, you, if you rely on simple usage to establish your property right, then the other person will say, oh, well, yeah, you used the bush uh, once to pick berries, but hey, you didn't sweat for it. So what's your problem if I take the bush, you know? Um, uh, that, that's, that's um, I, I don't, just get there first. It, it, maybe even first use isn't what I'm thinking. It's like, literally get there first. Be the first one to interact with a thing with the intent to own the thing. If something's unowned, literally no other human on the planet has a higher claim to it than because it's unowned. And so if you get there first, you get there first. You're a prospector, so to speak. I, I, I don't think I don't see how a, a, a latecomer, let's say, and to use Hoppe's language, uh, would would come along later and not be the first one and then somehow have higher claim to a thing just because I didn't sweat enough or something like the, the, the qualification that, that just seems like we're adding a lot of subjectivity, like the the act of getting there first, so to speak, is very objective, like you arrived first. First use, you know, it, use being maybe a bad word. It's just like you you touch it first, so to speak. Like you, uh, the the joke I used earlier was there's a there was a commercial here in the states. I don't know if you had it there. It was like there was two people at a car lot trying to buy a car, and two customers like eyed the same perfect car at the same time, and they both had like a race to get to the car first, and one guy got there and like stuck his tongue on the door handle just to like mark it as his because you know you know like kids will take desserts. And, you know, if they don't want another kid to want the dessert anymore, they'll lick it. So it becomes gross to the other person. Anyway, that was the joke. And that, that that's kind of um, that's that's the most objective property rule I can come up with that I've ever heard is just get there first, because that's a moment in time. And a, like, I, I, I don't want to say objective because I haven't thought it through all the way, but it feels like a, um, a, a definite moment, a very specific moment that can be shown to have occurred at a specific point in time, which declares um, a claim of ownership on a thing. Uh, it's, it's just like a time marker. It's like a time stamp. And so is labor, of course. Well, labor would be dependent upon getting there first. So it, it, seems, it seems superfluous. Like if you've already got there first, what you do next it seems extra, it seems unnecessary. All right. Thank you very much, Patrick. I took enough of your time. Uh, so I really appreciate your thoughts. Thank you very much. I, I would like to continue the conversation if you have additional thoughts on this area sometime. Doesn't have to be now, whenever. I enjoy talking with you. It's a good conversation. Same here. Thank you. Bye. 